Hello and thanks for joining me today. This is Danny and welcome back to my 1.10.2 series. Today we are going to be playing around with forestry tree breeding, which is something I've been wanting to do since I first started playing forestry. That was kind of one of the things that got me into it in the first place. Um, so here we go. But first of all, we have to talk to this guy because one of the first things we're going to want to do is create the alveary sieve. Um, to add to our alveary that we made a long, long time ago over here, painstakingly, if you remember that process. I broke a piece out of the alveary, so I have an alveary block that we're going to use to make an alveary sieve. But in order to make the alveary sieve, we're going to need three woven silk, and each one of these is nine silk wisps, which comes from... That's 27 silk, silky wisps that we get from silky propolis, and we only have a 60% chance of getting it. So we're going to need a lot of silky propolis, and, which we get from the silky comb, and we have an 80% chance there. So we're talking like, you know, about a 40% chance per comb that we're going to get a silky wisp. So we're going to need a lot of silky combs. Now we can get silky combs from a few different bees, besides the apiarist, which we can trade for. Um, we can get it from a tropical queen, exotic queen, and an edenic queen, and a leperine queen. None of these we have, um, but the leperine queen, according to this, says we can make it from a meadows princess and a forest drone, but I have not seen that that works. Um, but let's see how much we have right now. We've got... We don't have any... Oh, we have 10. Okay, so we have 10 silky wisps, so we, so we just need... Well, quite a few more. So I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna trade with this guy. I'm not gonna bother trying to find tropical bees at the moment because um, they're pretty hard. Well, I don't even know where a freaking jungle is at this point. But I've been trading with this guy for a while. And he takes potatoes. Um, we're gonna need a lot of these. We're gonna need a lot of potatoes. <laughs> I'm out of potatoes. I haven't been keeping very many potatoes because we don't really use them for much of anything. Um, but our farm should be growing potatoes now, now that I've taken some out. I'm just going to put this aviary back together for now because it's it's going to be a while before we're able to uh, <laughs> make... Before we're going to have enough... <laughs> Excuse me. Before we have enough of that. But I'm going to throw these... No, no, I'm not going to throw that in there. How about this? I'm going to throw the silky combs in there. And this thing I'm going to put back on here. And we got our alveary back. So as I mentioned earlier, this isn't giving us the bee that we want. It's not giving us that option. It's only giving us the common queen. So I don't know if that's a bug in Gendistry or if it's a bug with the JEI plugin that it's telling us incorrectly. <laughs> but I'm just going to keep trading with this guy. Um, but it's going to be a while. I've got to wait for some potatoes to grow and stuff. So while we're waiting for that, I'm actually going to make a chart for us. A tree beating chart. Yeah, we're done with this guy. Because we have all we need. Hooray! So I'm gonna break this thing again, and in a minute, <laughs> we're gonna take a peek at this mess. Um, but for now, let's just... Ah, oh, crap. Let's uh, destroy our alveary. A carpenter that has water. This is the recipe. And we're going to give it 27. And it's going to make three woven silk for us. Hooray! There's our woven silk. So we can now make our sieve. What the sieve is going to do is it's going to allow us to collect pollen um, in the aviary, or in the alveary, tree pollen. So when the bees go out and pollinate trees, well, cross-pollinate our trees. Let me back up a little bit. So when the trees are, when the bees are flying around here, they're going to pollinate, they're going to cross-pollinate our trees. And they're going to take pollen from one tree and they're going to put it in another one. And we can see if we look at some of our, let's look at this, it's a little easier. This birch tree, we can see that some of the leaves look a little bit funny. They look a little different. They've got those little bumps on them or whatever. That means that they've been cross-pollinated with another tree. And we can take our grafter, which is a forestry item that allows us to grab saplings every time we break a leaf. So if we break this leaf up here, a normal leaf, we're just going to get a normal sapling, and that is a silver birch sapling, which happens to be a forestry sapling. It's a little different than the regular birch, the uh, vanilla birch. But then if we break one of these guys, we have a chance of getting a different kind of sapling. So in this case, we ended up with a silver lime sapling, which if we look at our chart in a minute, we'll see that that happens to be what happens when we cross the apple oak with the silver birch. 
Um, so our butterflies or our bees, probably our bees, because the bees are much more efficient than butterflies, but they probably cross-pollinated those two trees. And, and now what's going to happen is that instead of the bees carrying the pollen from one leaf to another, at least the trees from that alveary, is the pollen is going to get stuck in the sieve where we can collect it. So we're going to use some industrious bees because those are actually one of the most efficient for pollinating. So we'll put these guys in the, not in the sieve, we're going to put these guys in the alveary and let them do their pollination thing. And then we're actually going to have to get another piece of woven silk to put in our sieve. We still need a little bit more silky combs um, because we need one more piece of woven silk. We, we need one more of these guys, one more woven silk to put in the sieve. This is the tree chart um, that I hope you appreciate this. If you are interested in doing trees, this should be a tremendous help to you. And it took me a very, very long time to put this together. Because as you can see, it's quite complicated. It isn't quite as straightforward as the bees. However, there aren't as many. This chart will basically help us get anywhere we want so we can decide which tree we want and be like, okay, I want to make a desert acacia tree. So we can tell from this chart, we need a teak and a balsa. For the teak, we need a dark oak and a jungle. For the balsa, we need a teak and an acacia. Um, and you can see there's kind of different branches of the tree, but they cross over each other a lot. So, you know, we have our oak and silver branch up here, which brings us to our silver lime and willows and Lemon. This image is available on Imgur. Um, this is the address. It's the Imgur address is THQ, lowercase v, lowercase o, and then capital D and capital H. Um, I'll put a link to that in the description in case you want to take a longer look at it. Um, but let's see. No. How are we doing? Oh, yeah. Okay, we got enough. Let's just put the rest of those in there. So let's make some glasses. So um, now remember how I said you can look at a tree and you can see where things have been cross pollinated um, by the little bumps. It's quite a bit easier to see those if we actually have the spectacles, I think they're called. Yeah, spectacles. I lost one of my. Uh, whatever i'm not gonna get into that right now so oh boy we're gonna lose all our all our living armor buffs but now we can very clearly see oh i'm really slow we can really clearly see where our trees have cross pollinated let me sleep so we don't have to deal with noisy annoying zombies and such so the spectacles make it really easy to see even from a distance you can see that these Oak leaves are much lighter than, um, than the other ones. So if we take our grafter to these leaves, as just as we did before, I mean, we'll see that we'll end up with something else. Um, so with this, there's a pretty good chance that we'll end up with a lime sapling or or a hill cherry, <laughs> because as we can see, our oak and birch make silver lime. Um, the hill cherry is. It's made from red spruce and either apple oak or silver birch. That's what this dotted line here means. Um, and there's actually two trees like that. The hill cherry and the mundane larch are made from red spruce, apple oak, or silver birch. All these white ones are vanilla. They're all vanilla trees or they're derived from vanilla trees. And mostly the forestry equivalents are the same, but there are a few differences. So now if we look at this one, this is a forestry tree, and most of the trees around here are actually forestry trees. And something you might notice about them, oh, and there's an apple or a hill cherry. That's probably how that guy cross pollinated. One thing you'll notice about the uh, forestry trees is that they're all about the same height. Um, this is a Minecraft one. You can see it's a little shorter, and they're all about the same shape. Now, if we go over here and look at our other tree farm. In fact, we can even look right here and see that we've got a really tall oak tree there. We've got oak trees over here that were blown up by creepers, but you can see you have unusual shapes and sizes with the vanilla oak trees. That's not the case with the um, with the forestry 
oak trees. They're all going to pretty much be about the same size. I mean, there's some variation. We can see a little bit of variation, um, but mostly they're going to be the same size, and they're not going to if they're not going to grow big weird shapes if they don't have space to uh, grow. In fact, they just won't grow at all. If you have if you have a bunch of saplings, like in here, you can see that they're they're growing spaced apart and these saplings down here will never grow because they don't have space to make the shape that they expect until of course our tree farm <laughs> picks them or chops them down. That's the normal color of the hill cherry leaves. Put these on and the deep red ones are the ones that have been pollinated and this is a silver lime. So there's a pretty good chance that if we break these we're going to end up with, what was it, the common walnut? Yeah, there's a good chance that we're going to end up with a common walnut. If we break a bunch of these, we got a cherry, and we got a hill cherry sapling. And as you can see, it is not stacking with that hill cherry sapling, which tells us that <laughs> there's something different. There's something special about that one, and it's probably a hybrid. Oh, we got some more cherries, and we got another one, yet another one that's not stacking. So like the bees, <laughs> we have this situation where, um, where we end up with hybrids. Okay, oh, there's our wo wo woven silk. So whoops, we can put that right in there. And now we should start getting some pollen in here and put them in here. And we can see we've got hill cherry, apple oak. So this is a hybrid cross between a hill cherry and apple oak. Um, not particularly useful, hill cherry, teak, so like the bees, we have a certain chance of getting this. In fact, if we look at the common walnut, because we have just enough bees installed, we can see all the tree breeding in JEI. So that's really that's actually where I got all this information. Um, so the common walnut has a 10% chance of being produced when a silver lime is crossed with a hill cherry. So if we break about 10 leaves that, well, probably over here, 10 out of these two trees or so, probably more than that, because some of these were probably crossed with different trees. But if we break like 15 or 20, we'll probably end up with a uh, walnut. Pollen is going to get dropped in here. And as soon as we pull any pollen out, it's going to destroy the silk. So it's like because we're like pulling it out of the strainer. <laughs> so you want to wait till this guy gets totally full before you pull stuff out. Now if we look at this tree, we do have our spectacles on. We don't see any deep red in it. Um, in fact, none of these trees out here we do. Even though there's butterflies floating around, but this just kind of shows us how much more efficient bees are than butterflies. Plus these trees are kind of spread out. And of course, like everything else, forestry does have a foresting backpack, which we can use to pick up saplings so that they don't take up our inventory, especially since a lot of them don't stack. And it'll also pick up logs when we cut down trees. Um, I, think, I think that's it. Um, but now if we take a look in here, we will see that it is not very big. <laughs> it's only got 15 slots, which isn't terribly impressive. But there is an upgrade. It's the woven upgrade, but it requires a lot of woven silk. So we have a goal in mind. Um, I'm kind of interested whoops, in this Coco Bolo tree. I think it will be very suitable for a build that I'm planning on doing. It's a really interesting looking wood. The planks um, look really cool. And the door looks kind of cool, too. And all these woods have different doors. And, of course, the only way to get them is to go through this process. Ooh, look at what this guy's got. A proven grafter. 150 uses. In case you hadn't noticed, the grafters only have 10 uses. <laughs> so it can be kind of a pain. Oh, he's got pollen, too. I'm going to grab some of that. And then larch. Um, maybe even a couple of them. Um, you may find when you're playing forestry that the villagers are definitely going to be your friends they're, they're going to have they're going to make things so much easier for you because they're going to find ooh giant sequoia wood because a lot of this stuff is like the giant sequoia is really hard to get through the breeding process it might have been his last trade but let's see if he's got some more 
There's another one over there. Look at that. This village. Man, I already captured three of them. This village is just crawling in these arborists. Oh, bullpine sapling. Bullpine pollen. Nice. I mean, we already saw how difficult it is to get pollen. And check this out. <laughs> of course, you know, you need a lot of emeralds. But let's see. Do you have anything else for us? Nope. Five. That's okay, I'm rich. <laughs> That's probably his last trade. Oh, hello. <laughs> How's it going? Yep, that's his last trade. So let's see. Where'd that other guy go now? Redwood Forest. <laughs> One thing about having biomes of plenty installed when you're playing forestry is that you have all these beautiful trees and forests and all over the place where you have to work your butt off with forestry to get trees. But there is a lore with forestry, and the bi Biomes of Plenty kind of messes with it a little bit. But the lore is that... Um, that the reason that the biodiversity in Minecraft is so limited is because that there was some event or something that caused the biodiversity in Minecraft to be very limited, which is why there's only like, you know, maybe six, seven different trees. And our job as foresters is to reintroduce biodiversity through the uh, breeding process. And that's, that's our task. If you haven't noticed yet, just like bees, breeding trees does take a really, really long time. There's a lot of randomness to it, and there's just a lot of waiting. Um, a little bit of grind and a lot of waiting. Um, we've set up this sieve a very, very long time ago, and I finally, <laughs> we finally got our four pollen. So we can start removing these because, like I said, you don't want to remove those until it's full because otherwise you're going to lose your silk. Might actually be a good idea for us to put a few more of those. But of course, now Genistry does. <laughs> does make things a little bit faster for us and a little easier. So, but we do need pollen. So for instance, if we put an oak sapling in here and some silver birch pollen, we right away get our option to grab a silver lime sapling or a white willow sapling because those are the two things that we can make with apple oak and silver birch, the silver lime, and the white willow. Um, by the way, this dotted line means that we can also make the white willow with one of these and silver lime. Um, but the question is, do I want to use that one piece of sil silver pollen? I mean, we're seeing that pollen is very valuable. In fact, I paid 16 emeralds for that piece of silver birch pollen, <laughs> for that one little bit of silver birch pollen. It's not going to help us to get where we need to go, but yeah, birch isn't going to help us get where we want to go anyway. So yeah, let's just take it. We already have silver lime, so we'll take we'll take the white willow. Ooh, that's the white willow. Nice, cool. It looks like a weeping willow, but it's kind of a grayish leaves. Uh, oh, look at that! You can walk right through the leaves. How bizarre! Nice. Oh, that is so cool. It like reminds me of being under like a we weeping willow tree. <laughs> Look at that. You can go right through the leaves. That's so cool. And I can feel like resistance. Like it kind of slows you down a little bit when you're going through it, but nice. Vines. This is really cool. I like this tree. It's fun. Anyway, did we get anything that's going to help us now? We've, we want our cocoa, cocoa, <laughs> we want this. Uh, and we still need a desert acacia, which is still a balsa and a teak. We have teak. We don't have balsa. Um, balsa is acacia and teak. So we got ourselves an acacia. Uh, so we're going to need either acacia pollen or teak pollen. Um, so I am actually going to plant this acacia somewhere around here, somewhere near our alviary. This is our ipe sapling that we bought. Um, and as you can see, it will not grow no matter how many times I hit it with <laughs> bone meal. And that is because the girth of the ipe sapling is two by two. So that means we actually need four ipe saplings in order to grow a tree, similar to a uh, dark oak. I found a guy who will give us acacia pollen. <laughs> For two emeralds. That's nice. That will be very useful. 
I think I've got all his trades, so yeah. I can... Oh, maybe not. He's doing his thing. Let's see. Sweet chestnut. Sure, we'll take that. So I've got... I've got like four of these guys now, four of these arborists. And uh, if you happen to watch the uh, video where I set up where I make the guys come out and then go away again, <laughs> well, now that I have more than one in here, when I hit the button, it tackles them. <laughs> so now here's the next guy. I could have swore that I had a guy that was giving me um, hype saplings. Ooh. Oh, balsa, that is total, that's what we totally need. Balsa and acacia. I, you know what, I think, I think we may have reached our goal already. We have teak and we have balsa saplings, but we don't have pollen of either. We need pollen from one of these trees, either teak or balsa. Look at this guy, one emerald for three proven frames. That is nice. I have no idea how big this thing is going to be. But this is the sweet chestnut. And it has a girth of two by two. Ooh, that's interesting. That is the sweet chestnut. And over here in the sandier area, we'll plant a desert acacia sapling. I don't think these guys are restricted by biome. There we go. Oh, that's interesting. Whoa. That is a balsa. <laughs> nice. Very tall and skinny. So that's the balsa wood. It's kind of gray. Oh, right, look at that. Oh, I like that. Oh, I can see using this for, for certain things. I got the planks from these guys too. This is the sweet chestnut. And there's the plank. It looks an awful lot like oak. Um, maybe a little bit more yellowish, maybe like a palish yellow. <laughs> and then over here we've got the desert acacia wood planks. And these are larch and the pinkish wood. Willow, kind of a yellow, yellow green. So now that we have a desert acacia over here, <laughs> we've already reached this point, I didn't even realize it. We've already reached the desert acacia um, because we got it from a villager, I believe, if I remember correctly. So all we need is a dark, is to cross dark oak with desert acacia. So all we need is pollen from one or the other because we already have saplings from both, but we can't use the vanilla dark oak saplings. So we have to make them for forestry dark oak saplings and we can do that just like that. <laughs> all we have to do is stick a vanilla sapling in our portable analyzer use a piece of honey, and we end up with a forestry sapling. There's a very wide tree kind of dominating the landscape here, but that's okay. And these two are right next to each other, so there's actually a reasonably decent chance that these guys are just going to cross-pollinate, or that our bees are going to cross-pollinate these, and we might end up with a natural, co what's it called again? Co Cocobola tree. So I took the pollen out of here, and as you can see, we lost our, our sieve, our uh, woven silk. So I'm just going to dump these in there and I'm going to throw another woven silk in there. But then I would also like to take this thing apart. I'm going to get all the inventory out of here so that we don't lose any things. Because we're going to add two more sieves just to kind of speed the process along and so that it can store more um, pollen. And we have six woven silk because I've been doing a little bit of trading. But we're going to have to do a little more trading so that I can get more woven silk. So I finally got our dark oak pollen. Hooray! So we'll lose our silk, as you can see, when we take that out. Um, but now, we can't... Now, of course, we could take this dark oak pollen, and we can right-click in a desert acacia leaf, and then we would have a chance, when we break that, of getting the coco lobo. Um, it's like a 10% chance. So we'd probably end up having to do that like 10, 15 times or so, but, you know, why? Why would we do that when we can just stick it in the advanced meter channel and have a 100% chance? It, takes, it costs... A little bit more resources, of course. But then, hooray, we have our Coca Lobo sapling. Now, I don't know what the girth is on this thing, so I hope I hope that we can plant it with a single sapling. Otherwise, I may have to do a little bit more screwing around. Yep, one by one. Yay. 
Height is largest. Oh boy. Let's see how tall this guy is. Oh boy. Oh, that's that is a cool looking tree. There's the bark. That is a really interesting shape. It actually, it kind of reminds me of, what are they called? Eastern white pines, I think. The, sh the trees they used to use um, for the big ship masts <laughs> on the east coast of the U.S. Or actually, it wasn't the U.S. back then. But So we can get as many saplings as we want from this guy, just from each tree, or from each leaf. This one, I'm actually going to cut down um, and replant because I want the wood. I want a lot of wood. And then plus we'll get a bunch of saplings too when we do this. <laughs> and the butterflies. Hey, what'd you do to my tree? <laughs> Got a lot of saplings. Six, yeah. <laughs> Alright, butterfly, you can come back. That's a nice shape. Nice. I've got planks laying all over the place. We're, we're not gonna leave that like that, but ooh, that is that is a very interesting wood. I like that. Cool. So there's definitely a few more trees that I want to check out, but um, I don't want to get I don't want to keep you guys up too late. Yeah, bull pine right here, and that's what the planks look like. Kind of a yellowish. That's kind of interesting. I like that. This is silver lime, and that's what the planks look like. And of course, there's our willow, our cherry wood, and well, of course, we have dark oak. We already know what that looks like. And I picked up a few other planks here, too, of trees that we don't even have. The giant sequoia. This is a tree that I really, really want to grow. I'm going to... I'm, Gonna kind of try to work toward that. Some palm wood. This wood I really like in my FTB Infinity world. I used this wood for a couple different things. One of them was a bridge and it looked really nice on the bridge. There is, pod, oh, that's a nice looking wood too. Paddock. An antique, I think we may have looked at this already, but it's kind of a grayish. Yeah, there was actually in the village, there was a um, building made out of teak, and I think we ended up picking up a bunch of that. And then ebony. Oops, that's a dark. Yeah, I love all the building options this gives us, and then the giant sequoia. Ooh, look at that. It has like a brick pattern. Some coca lobo pollen. Hmm. Did we get that from crossing? Oh wait, no, no. We have a coca lobo tree right there. <laughs> I think I'm getting tired. Uh, oh look at the butterflies. Really like this tree. <laughs> Check that out. What is that? Crazy because it's up at their height. I don't know what the deal is with the butterflies, but they just love hanging out on the top of this greenhouse. And now I guess I just needed to put a big tall tree next to the greenhouse to lure them away from there. In the next episode, we are going to be getting ready for a, a, another large build. And we're going to be playing around a little bit with the RF tools and RF tools dimensions and the builder block to do some terraforming and fun stuff like that. So, of course, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And of course, if you did enjoy this, please don't forget about the like button and join me next time. Thanks for watching.